Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at the SDR Play RSP DX software defined receiver. So first up we'll take a closer look at the radio itself and then we'll jump over on the computer. I'll fire up SDR Uno and we'll take a look at how this radio works and demo a few of the main features that this unit offers. So the first thing to note about the RSP DX is that it has a metal case. And that of course is useful for shielding out unwanted EMI, uh, but it's also nice because it gives the radio a little bit of weight and that'll help it stay on your desk, especially when you have antenna cables connected to it. So the RSP DX has just one tuner, but it does have three software selectable antenna ports. Antenna A and antenna B are both 50 ohm SMA ports. Antenna C is a 50 ohm BNC jack. And this replaces the high impedance wire terminal port that was on the previous generation radio. So one of the improvements for the RSP DX is that the antenna ports have better isolation between them than on the previous generation radio. So what that means is that if you have multiple antennas connected at the same time, there will be minimal crosstalk between any of the antennas not in use and the one that currently is in use. So according to the spec sheet, antenna C, which is the BNC port, is best for signals 200 megahertz and below, whereas the other two antenna ports don't have any listed restrictions on them. In addition to the improved isolation between the antenna ports, SDR Play has also added some filtering to improve reception below 500 kilohertz. So take a look at the other side of the radio. We have the standard USB-B port for connecting to a computer. And then over here we have a jack to connect up a 24 megahertz reference clock if you want to use that for higher frequency stability. So let's get this thing connected up to an antenna and the computer. I'll fire up SDR Uno and we'll take a look at some of the other improvements with the RSP DX. Okay, so we're taking a look at SDR Uno now. And there really aren't any drastic differences between this version of SDR Uno and the last version. The biggest difference is up here in the main RX control window. You can see here that there are some new band framing buttons that have been added. If I first click on the bands button, you can see there are now four choices where there used to be three. Ham lower, ham upper, broadcast, and the new HDR band frames which are what I have displayed here now. So clicking any of these band frame buttons causes the radio to go into HDR mode, which you can see over here in the main RX window. And you can also see that over here, the bandwidth is now limited to 1.7 megahertz when in HDR mode. If you wanna get out of HDR mode for any reason, you just simply click the button again, as you can see here, and the little green light turns off and it goes back into low IF mode. While I'm over here in the main RX window, you can see that the RF gain has also been given some more granularity than it used to have in previous versions. Now next up over here for the RSP DX, there are three antenna buttons, so you can quickly choose between whichever antenna port that you want to. These of course will be different depending on which radio you have plugged in, but for the DX, these are the options. And as you may be able to tell here, the bias T is only available with antenna port B. Down here is a new save workspace button. This allows you to save the window configuration a little bit easier than in previous versions. So if you have a window configuration you wanna save, you just click the button and then you can apply it to whichever workspace you want and you can see that has now been saved in workspace number four. And one more thing to mention about the HDR mode is that it automatically turns on whenever turning on any of these band frames selected under the HDR tab, but it can also be activated by clicking any of the bands that are under two megahertz. And you can see when I clicked on the 160 meter band, it automatically went into HDR mode. So clicking any of the band frames that's above two megahertz, say for example, the 20 meter band, you can see that automatically turns off the HDR mode and puts the radio back into low IF mode or zero IF mode, whichever one was selected previously. Before I get on with showing a demo of some of the receive capabilities, I'll show one more new feature. 
And that new feature is the status bar down here below the waterfall display. When you first start up SDR Uno, you can see down here, it'll tell you what version you're on. And if you click inside the status bar, it'll automatically launch a change log to show you what's been changed since the last version. So once SDR Uno is in play mode and up and running, down here you can see that the status bar will display information about the last thing that you clicked or what mode the radio is in. So for instance, down here it says filter force selected. And that's because I clicked on the 20K filter button over here so I could hear this wide bandwidth ham transmission. Now, for example, if I go over here and click the lower sideband button, you can see down here that the status bar reflects that. So there may be a few small features that I've missed here, but I think that covers most of the major updates for SDR Uno version 1.33, supporting the RSP DX. So let's move on and do a little bit of a band scan and take a look at how the RSP DX is performing. So I'm gonna focus most of this demo on frequencies two megahertz and below. So I'll start the band scan off down in the VLF portion of the spectrum. Now the lowest frequency I'm able to receive right now is 19.1 kilohertz on my 80 and 40 meter dipole that's out in the side yard. I'm sure if I had a different antenna and maybe had everything in the house shut off so that there wasn't any interference, I might be able to get some signals lower down. But this is what we've got to work with for tonight. So what I'll do from here on out, since most of these signals down here in the VLF section are just going to be beacons or data signals, I'll just give a quick snippet of the audio of each one and then kind of flash up on the screen what I think the signal is. Once I get further up the spectrum into the long wave portion of the band, we'll see if we can find some AM broadcast stations from Europe. So that was a sample of the stations I was able to receive down in the VLF portion of the spectrum and the lower part of the long wave band. So here at 171 kilohertz is where I'm starting to pick up some of the AM broadcast stations from Europe and Northern Africa. So I believe this station is 171 kilohertz AM from Morocco. I'm going to unmute the audio and we'll take a listen. <laughs> المغرب أو أمريكا أو 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 الصين وهي قضية الأمن المعلوماتي على سبيل المثال عندما تتحدث عن الأمن المعلوماتي إنه مثل الكيل يعتمد الأمر على الزاوية التي تنظر من خلالها إلى هذا الكيل. So the next signal that I've got here is pretty faint. You can see the carrier here on the waterfall. If I unmute the audio, we're not going to really be able to hear much of the audio, but I believe this signal is RUV from Iceland. I'll unmute this so you guys can hear a little bit of it. So like I said, there's not much there other than the carrier. Every once in a while the signal comes up and you can catch a syllable or two of what someone is saying, but not really a usable signal. The next station that I'm receiving is 198 kilohertz, which is BBC4 from England. This one's not super strong either. We're able to make out some of the audio, but again, it's kind of weak. Uh, I'll unmute the audio so you can hear it, but it's not going to really be all that listenable. The next station that I'm getting here is also on the weak side, but you can see the carrier. And if I unmute the audio, you'll be able to hear a little bit of the broadcast. I believe this station to be 225 kilohertz from Poland. So the next station I'm able to pick up is 252 kilohertz. I believe this to be Radio Algeria. I was listening to this one a couple of nights ago and the signal was real strong, but because the band seems like it's a little rough tonight, the signal is a bit low. 
I'll unmute the audio so you guys can hear it. So I've skipped over the AM broadcast band and I'm up at the 160 meter ham band. There's a couple of guys talking AM. So I'll unmute the audio here so you can hear them for a minute. You know, uh, I think if anything, with the way there's been uh, a lack of uh, sun activity, uh, we may be in for a mini ice age. All these people just jumping up and down. Oh my God, oh my God, it's a half a degree warmer. We're all gonna boil. So last up here, we're gonna finish up on lower sideband on the 160 meter ham band. I'll let you guys listen to see what that sounds like. So we are standing by for the lovely and the talented Susie up there at Toad Harbor headquarters, controlled by KB2 Z Victor Papa. Hey guys. Hello Susie, how you doing? Who, who am I talking to? I don't know who to. This is uh, this is bad Mike, and uh, and then the other end is good Mike. Why is one bad and the other good? What is what is your story? Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap things up for my overview of the RSP DX. If you want to learn more, there'll be links down in the description that you can click on. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll also find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.